relationship, but it's not all on the other person. All right. Well, moving on to uh, I will say this is a relationship issue, but I already got my answer to it. So let's just get to it. A little background here is that I make around $250,000 a year. My fiance makes around 65 k a year. We've both been divorced. I asked for a prenup protecting my existing assets, two rental properties worth around 400 k together, my retirement account, my house which I live in, my existing savings account, and just sentimental things. I offered to pay for a lawyer for her and make everything earned after the wedding fair game in a divorce split. In my previous divorce, my ex took a lot that I had before we ever even met each other and took a lot of things with sentimental value just to hurt me. I floated the idea of a prenup and she was not okay with it. It hurt her feelings and she said I was planning for a divorce if I want a prenup. She had this idea that when we marry, everything becomes ours. We've been dating for 4 years and had very few bumps, so I don't see a super high risk of divorce, but I do acknowledge it's there. Anyways, I love her and I said sure. Fast forward a couple of months and her grandmother abruptly died. It wasn't expected. Her grandmother was quite healthy before. She had a heart attack. Apparently, the grandmother left the entire estate to her, worth roughly $800,000. Now the tables have turned and she wants a prenup protecting these assets from me, which I was fine with. But she doesn't want to sign my prenup in return for that. Her reasoning is that her grandmother wouldn't have wanted her wealth to leave her direct family, and that there's a reason it was all left to me and not my siblings or parents, and that the prenup must not have been important to me because I threw out the idea after the minimal pushback. I'm at a loss here. In one regard, I'm glad we had prenup discussions because it brought out these sides of us, but I'm really wondering if this four-year relationship that's been full of nothing but love and support for each other until now is even salvageable. She's not willing to budge on her own prenup like I was, and I'm finding this whole situation very frustrating. Oh. So I'm going to go backwards on this and go last. So, Theus? Um, leave her. Uh, the relationship's still young enough. You can find another one, bro. Because you a little stupid. I mean, the way you tell the story is pretty responsible of you, and it's level-headed and all of that. But are you really surprised that a woman would present an argument of what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine? I mean, that's an age old double standard that, you know, kind of rolls. But he's being legit. Look, I've been through a divorce. This is how it affected me. I just want to make sure that if something did happen, because no one plans for a divorce, but when it happens, it's too late to plan for the divorce. So, I just want to make sure that anything before we came together, I at least have that to go back to. I don't want to turn around and end up having to live on my best friend's couch. Right. <laughs> and she's like, no, it's so insulting. If you trust me and love me and la, 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 la. And OK, cool. Um, then when the money come on your side, it is your money now. OK. All right. Um. She's not wrong for feeling how she feels, but she might be wrong for you. So let it go. Trade her in. Get another one. The queen, the highness, Tracy. The queen feels as though this woman is full of garbage. She is a hypocrite. She is the type of woman that makes all of us other women out there who are not desperate because we're not desperately seeking a man, but we would certainly like one. She makes it hard for us prematurely gray people out in these streets. She is a selfish twit. He should run as fast as he can and never look back. He can find someone that meets his standards better than I. I'm not a gold digger, but I ain't no broke broke. The queen has spoken. So as the note, the lab had noted that Tracy agreed with me. Um, I don't think anybody's going to disagree on this show, but I still got Anna. So Anna. And I coded it, Ya or Ye or whatever his name is now. He don't Ditto. Know. Ditto. Yes. <clears throat> 
I'm 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 going to convert back to what Thea said in the last story. This is just stupid. Dude, this is just stupid. Like, how is this even a question? How do I get through with a... This, this is... Bruh, this one makes me, more sense than that last one. Let me, let me just speak to you. Let me just speak to you real quickly. You need to either give her three ultimatums. And at this point, I mean ultimatums. Either we sign both of them, we sign neither of them, or you can go. That's just the bottom line to it. We're not going to hold a big discussion. We're not going to play this coop. Because you know the gaslighting, the, the student she said, well, you didn't make too much of a pushback on it, so apparently it wasn't important. Man, get out of here with this crap. This, it, this is stupid. This is not even a question that she is in it for the money. She wants the ability. In Laban's terms, she wants the ability that she can keep her money in case of a divorce and she could take a portion of your money in case of a divorce. That she's going to come out a whole lot richer. Simply, and I hate to say it like this, but I'm, I'm just being real. She's going to come out richer simply by divorcing you. That should be always in the back of your head for every argument, every mis misunderstanding, every little issue that comes up. That should be in the back of your head all the time. See, I, I don't know. I disagree there. I do, it depends on what the situation is. If it's if it's what's going on with the money, what's going on with the finances, while you looking at some other woman and blah blah blah, I can see the argument. If she blows up because you didn't put the lid on the peanut butter, uh, okay, really? What are we doing here? What are we doing? So, yeah. And I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna take one off the table. I said either neither one of y'all side a prenup. After what this lady said, either we both side a prenup or you can leave because you don't show your true colors. So I'm taking that not side of the prenup because no, no. I'm talking about how you sign a prenup after you already got married. Did I marry yet? Did I marry yet? Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm still. Well, so the inheritance came before they got married. Okay. Yes, yes. yes. that's what I understood. When she got the inheritance from the grandma, eight hundred thousand dollars, and now she wants to sign a prenup before the marriage. Mm -hmm. All the while he wanted to prenup way before she even got the inheritance. And no, you just already traded to be a, get a divorce and everything. Okay. Because that's how people are. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's not real till it's real. You know? And, and when it's when it when I can see you have the money and and I'm being barred from it, I can be offended. I don't have it, I don't have that situation on my side. But then when I do have it on my side, when I it's a whole new equation now. It's a whole different discussion now, you know, kind of like the one we had with the, the sisters with the baby, you know. People funny like that. I just say just let it go. Hmm. But I, but if you're gonna go into a marriage actively concerned about a divorce, then don't get married. Hmm. Trusting, right? yeah. I do think, and I know this is very unpopular because it's too, I guess, logical. But when you are at the point where you're seriously talking about getting married, then you have to acknowledge that there is a relationship component and there's a business component, right? of a marriage it just is because you're trying to build something you're trying to grow something right there are objectives that need to be met do we see raising children the same way do we see religion in a compatible way how do we view um moving or relocating for work um finances finances do we keep separate accounts and and manage it jointly 
Do we keep separate accounts and we just take care of what needs to be taken care? You know, all those conversations need to be happening. And then just like when you write your business plan, you also should be planning for the business not working out. So you have that logical discussion because that's how the prenup discussion should happen. Right. It should be a part of that whole long, serious thing. It's all about estate planning. Right. Because you want to make sure that if we do get a divorce, that you are not left in a worse position than when you came to me. And if we and if I were to pass away prematurely or you were to pass away prematurely, what type of lifestyle would we like to try to have in place for the remaining party? Right. You should have all these kinds of discussions early, early and then periodically touch on a few of them. But people don't want to do that. You know, and I'm guilty. I tried. My wife wasn't having no parts of those conversations. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I just think it's important because this is the shit that can happen. You know, uh, ideally, we all grow old together, sitting on the porch, eating pudding or some shit. I don't know what old people do. But, you know, I might not get there with you, you know, heart attack, car accident, whatever. So I don't know, man. And while you are still feeling friendly towards each other, yes, you would then think of the best outcome if you did come to a divorce. You know, it's just, it's very logical to me. Yeah. But wherever there's high emotion, logic doesn't have much of a place. That's right. why business deals are oftentimes conducted with a lawyer or a mediator. Because you have to take the emotion out of that part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and mm -hmm. I was talking to a coworker just the other day, you know, part of me, you know, I'm an Android, so I have a, a operating system. And like I was telling him, it's like part of my operating system is for serious things, you make your decision before you ever encounter the problem. Like under what conditions would you leave someone in a relationship? Under what conditions would you actually contemplate causing serious harm to another person? Under what conditions would you, you know, those serious things that will, those life altering things make that decision before you're in it because that way when you get to that point and you know god forbid the relationship is failing and then you don't know what to do and you oh my gosh i don't know you don't have to come up with a decision in that moment you just have to follow through on a decision you already made all right